Hi right, guys, Dave Man Max 6 for JTV and we are at Las Vegas uh, City Athletic Club with the reigning, very young, <laughs> uh, women's figure, I mean women's physique Olympia champion, uh, Shanique Grand Shanique. Thanks for being on JTV for the very first time. Absolutely, I'm honored. <laughs> so, you are only 22, right? 24. 24 now, okay, okay. <laughs> And already on top of the world, already a champion of your discipline. Um, and um, I wanted to get a little bit of a you know backstory because you know you're so young and you kind of just came on the scene like a thunderstorm and rise to the top very 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 quickly. So I kind of want people to find out a little bit about your history and uh, you know how what it's like to be the best in the world at your age. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your journey and why you got involved into bodybuilding and and how you get started. Well, I got into bodybuilding, well, mainly fitness at, at first, just for my health. You know, um, most people's reason to get into fitness and start working out is to better their health. I didn't really eat well. I was super skinny, but I ate like McDonald's. Um, there's a lot of junk food, Chinese food, nothing really per uh, pertaining to my health. So when my doctor had insisted to start working out, incorporating more cardio, more extracurricular activities because I was a track runner and it just like cold turkey stopped. Um, after I got into the gym and I started working out and eating cleaner, I noticed changes to my body and I was like, oh, I see a little bit of abs, I see a little tightness here and there. So it came like more of an addiction, like just like I love going to the gym, gotta get there. I was going to the gym literally seven times a week. Wow. Um, and that's, no days off. Yeah, no days off. You know what you would call that? A full-time bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was it was fun. Um, but somebody had actually uh, came up to me and they asked me if I competed. I had no idea what that was. Um, at the time, I was super shy. And competing, when I looked it up, seemed way out of my caliber, way out of something that I would ever do. The comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. And um, what you need to do is step out of that comfort zone because you never know what can happen. So, everything kind of fell one after another. My coach now, Johnny Gasolina, he had emailed me. Um, it was literally two months after. Somebody had told me about competing and um, I just went for it. <laughs> I was like, I might as well, you know, you never know what can happen. So we started a 12 week prep. And what year was that? That was 2014. Okay. I competed in my first show August 2014. Um, and I won my first show in figure division. I won overall for that. What well, show was it? It was um, NPC Muscle Beach in Long, oh. Long Branch in Jersey, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then it was 14 weeks later, I did East Coast Championships, got first place. And the following week, I honorably got my pro card at NBC National. So within four months, I got my pro card. It's something I never really talked about. After three shows? Yeah. Wow. I'm just, I'm just really proud of that. Um, I became one of the youngest figure pros uh, at 19 years old. So it was a short-lived amateur year, but a very evolving pro lifestyle. I did my first pro show um, the following year in 20, uh, 2015 in August, Tampa Pro, I got fifth place. But after a while, um, I started growing. So hold on a second, what is that like to keep winning, 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 and then you get it to pros oh, and oh, you get fifth, oh. is it tough? Honestly, um, being young, I didn't know how to handle a loss. I got fifth place and I would usually get the first or second. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, at, the, at that time, I didn't know how to handle it. You could see it in my face, I didn't like it. But you have to understand that there is something you need to ask the judges. You need to go back to the drawing board, talk to your coach, and figure out what you need to fix. I found out it was my posing, for sure. I didn't really pose that well. Um, my suit, hair, makeup, all that matters mm. when it comes to plus, especially your tan. That matters too. Um, so that comes into um, a big thought when you're getting ready for a show, not just your body, but everything else, for females at least. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will, you know, say it's politics, but it's really not. It's all to do with your own package you bring. The small page. details. Yes, every single detail counts. So after that year, I did Pittsburgh Pro, where everything kind of changed. I got sixth place, and I was told to switch to physique. 
and um, physique is <laughs> it's it's an it's another level than figure. You're showcasing your physique longer on stage. You're doing more mandatories. It's harder. You're sweating on stage. You need to hold your poses longer. Yeah. You know, it's more than just there's routines friends. like real routines. routines. Yeah, yeah, two minutes and. Um, I was super shy to like want to even do like a routine so it took me two weeks pretty much to just like get my head together because I was doing the New York Pro that year 2016. I won that show um, but I was you could tell I was super new to the physique division but I was ready to grow and what I love so much about the physique division is I still have room to grow and balance myself out because I'm still 24 I still have time to grow and my muscle maturity hasn't been hit yet so Baby. it's just a yeah. slow process really yeah yeah so you didn't do the olympia right away you win new york but you you don't go to the olympia that year i remember um you didn't compete right right so away 2016, in the olympia. um i got into an accident you're right i was attacked by three girls um Jeez. <laughs> a knife went three inches into my forearm. The scar is still oh there. Oh my god! Yeah, it's pretty bad. Back back home in Jersey. Yeah, Jersey. I I ended up moving the following year from there. Is that why you're here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know where you'll end up. Life happens. Yeah. And, um, I had a fourth birthday Olympia. It was I was four weeks out at that time. Oh man. So lifting, I couldn't even. I, there was no movement. I lost um, nerve damage, tendon damage. Damn. I still have some um, nerve damage there still. But I kept them going. You know, I recovered well. I had a little shoulder imbalance after a while from being in the sling. But, you know, physical therapy, hand therapy all helped. And um, I competed in my first show again in 2017. I won that one, uh, Korean Nascimento. And then I did the Near Pro again, and I won that one. So I qualified for Olympia again. Yep. So after that, those two shows, um, I had a eye history uh, in my family. And my mom has, um, she's had, had uh, cataracts before. And when I had gone to my eye doctor, he said that my eyes are longer than the average eye. So a retina attachment is possible, but he didn't tell me like, you know, when it could possibly happen. So I had noticed like a dark curtain halfway through my eye. And um, after that, I had to go to the doctor and see what was going on. He had told me that I had about Two weeks until my eye would lose vision. Oh wow! And I was three weeks out from the Olympia oh, at man. the time. So I kept the thing on God. <laughs> Am I ever going to get to the stage? Um, after my surgery, I had August twenty third of twenty seventeen. My coach and I were talking. We we're like, okay, we're going to do low carb, some fats, rest for three days, then back to training. It didn't go as planned. Um, I was unable to get up. I couldn't walk. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't even step outside for two months wow. because the sunlight was too um, too bright for my eyes. If I opened this eye, it would move this eye. So I couldn't open my eyes at all. I had someone come and take care of my dog. He could take care of me um, for months. I couldn't really do much, but um, it was kind of like God's blessing when I was able to see out of that eye after two months and um, open my eye because I had swelling from it and everything. And, I still had the motivation to get to the stage. I still had the focus to get back into the dieting, the training. It took some time. You know, you lose you lose a lot of muscle, you lose a lot of strength, but one day at a time, consistency, persistent, and I am the prize. We'll get you faster to your goal. So um, that following year, 2018, I got ready for the Arnold Classic, and I won that one, became Miss International in 2018, and that was such an honor. And then I have qualified for the L again. Luckily, 2018 was so great. Such a blessing to me. Finally, a good year. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I made it to Olympia stage and I won it. And it was just so prolonged. And it was, I cried, you know, because it was good because a lot of people knew what, what went on those two years. And it was just like everyone kind of went through it with me. You know, my followers and people who, who watched me in the gym here and there. They all just knew that this was finally it. You know, I made it to the stage. Everyone was like, wrap yourself a bubble wrap, be okay. <laughs> Don't stay out late, get home, go to the gym, go to the store, that's it. But I was just so happy when I got up on stage. I was wow. so happy. So, do you feel it's a lot of pressure to be the best in the world at your age? How do you handle that title? And how does it change your life? Honestly, um, 
at 23 years old, people are partying, especially out in the West Coast. Um, they have different kind of varieties. And um, getting in, I pretty much grew up into this industry from 18 to 24. And um, it's not really like a big change for me, only because I'm used to it since I was a teenager. You know, I didn't, I, I skipped the college part, just focus on, you know, working and going toward my passion more. And you know, some people become successful in that, some people don't, and I'm just happy that I've gotten to the point yeah. of success. Um, it's a lot of pressure for sure, because every year everyone's like, you're gonna win again, you got 10 more Olympias, I'm like, you know, it's- Wait a minute, let me win two, <laughs> like, three. <laughs> one year at a time, yeah. one step at a time. But what I do is, I can only compete once a year. You know, I do the Olympia, and then I take the time to, you know, visit my family on the East Coast, travel, do guest posings like I did this year, and just live a little bit because you need that balance in order to love competing and love dieting. Right now, I'm still hungry, but I know I had such a great summer and such a great off season that I'm just okay with just going through it all, pushing through these last two weeks, and then going back into my balanced lifestyle. What did you want to do before you fell into this and you realized, oh man, I'm good at this, I can actually make a living and a profession out of it. What did you want to do for work? Like, did you have something in mind as far as career before this? I was into modeling before oh, okay. I started. Um, I was like 108. That's usually like wow. one way. Um, what do you weigh now? Right now, I'm 154. Wow. So, in off season, I get up to 175. So. You don't look it at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, yeah. it's in the right places. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I just think that overall, you should just be able to do one, two shows a year and then kind of just take it easy. Don't, don't go too deep into off season. Don't eat too much. But when it's time to get ready for a show, wrap it up, start getting into cardio, start cleaning out your diet, and it's going to go so much more smoother. I was hoping for that. This is great advice. Yeah. Is there, I know you have a sponsor, right? A couple of few people. You want to say thank you to your sponsor? Anybody on camera? Oh, Project AD. Um, I've been with them for two years. It'll be two years um, this November. Nice. And they are like family to me. When you find the right sponsor who just takes care of you and they just, they want to see the best out of you, it means so much. Nice. You know? And protein house out here they have a great they feed you they have great food <laughs> i go there every other day and pick up my meals nice. i get two meals um every i get two two sets of meals um for two days worth and then um i go back again i love that place so much that's it's awesome great. are you still working with a coach yes johnny oh. casalina i've been with him since day one can't switch coaches uh, well not, not if it works if it works properly <laughs> if they are good what i always tell people is when you're looking for a coach, always make sure that they know what they're doing. You know, ask around. It's best to get recommendations of a coach and see their work. Do your homework, due oh, diligence. Yeah. Don't just go with somebody who's popular on Instagram. That's horrible. But um, Johnny is super smart. He always broke everything down for me. Because I was super young, I didn't really know much. Yeah. Um, but he yeah, definitely sure. knows how to work with female athletes um, in the pro caliber making sure that we keep the feminine side for yeah. us. <laughs> I think he's doing a good job. Oh, I, I love him. He's great. Thank you. Well, Shanique, thank you so much for meeting with us only two weeks before the Olympia. You look phenomenal, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure everybody tells you here, uh, but I'll tell you anyway. Thank you. And then thank you so much for shooting with JTV. Absolutely. It was an honor. All right, thank you.